Alright guys, this is the Rage and Reject. You're watching Rage and Reject TV. I just wanted to make a GFW video. Uh, get the word across. Hashtag join the force. Um, you know, I'm a big TNA fan. Uh, I've been a TNA fan since 2005 when I started watching it. And over the years, it's got worse. Um, but it's been at least some, uh, pretty much the best wrestling around since it's since it's been on Spike TV, at least. Uh, and even watching old videos, is it was really good back then, too. Um, but, you know, after the whole, uh, I would say, 2009, when Hogan came around, TNA dropped dramatically. I mean, the whole Russo era uh, was kind of like, it was bad, but it was still watchable, and it was still the best wrestling around. But you're comparing it to WWE, which ain't saying much, in ROH. Um, sorry, my, re my ringtone. Uh, text tone, anyway. Um, anyways. Moving on. Um, after that, TNA went really downhill. 2010 and 2011 was TNA's worst years. Um, some people, for whatever reason, say 2013 just because of Aces and Aces. whoop de fucking do One angle. No big fucking deal. I do not base a complete promotion based on one uh, angle if the rest of the show is good. I mean, that's just common logic in my mind. But the IWC never seems to uh, amaze me at how stupid they can be. Uh, anyway, as in 2014, TNA is... It was alright for the most part, but here the last few weeks it's just become so hard to watch because you just do not get any solid matches. Slammiversary is pretty decent. Uh, the download I had didn't have the main event, so I didn't get to watch the main event. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, but anyway, TNA has just been like hard to watch because Dixie Carter is just getting on my fucking nerves. But, you know, being on the damn TV all the damn time. Right. I mean, every fucking week it's Dixie Carter, Dixie Carter. She should have already gone. But no, it's like her playground. It makes it feel so, so low budget, so amateurish when she is on screen. That's what, you know, if it wasn't for her, TNA would actually feel like a real wrestling show. Not counting, you know, the low attendance and, you know, how they, you know, on one side they're empty. You know, and a lot of people like to say that TNA sucks based on popularity and I find that funny if they base anything on popularity they can go back to Justin Bieber and Britney Spears and Lady Gaga and Kesha and Miley Cyrus so make sure to think before you talk about popularity and you know there's a lot of a lot of great wrestling indie promotions but they're just not up to par with what TNA is capable of when they try now, TNA, the youth movement, was good, but now they just seem to only focus on storylines and storylines. That's all they're focusing on. And wrestling is not good enough to be a show in wrestling show second. Like a soap opera first, wrestling show second. That's not the way wrestling is. WWE does it, that's why they suck now. The only reason people put up with it is because they know how... To wrap them, wrap their fan base around their finger. They have John Cena for the girls and teenagers. Uh, I mean, the teenage girls and the kids. Um, they have, you know, Daniel Bryan for all the internet geeks and casual fans that love to chant yes. Um, and he's just a likable guy, you know. And he don't even have to wrestle good in order to be over. Um, you got CM Punk, even though he ain't there anymore. He was pretty much the Daniel Bryan before Daniel Bryan. Um, you know, WWE has a lot of these people that can draw. You know, and that is not necessarily a good thing. The IWC is also known for talking about how people can and can't draw. Um, that's not what wrestling fans care about. It's a what what we care about is a good product. What we care about is a good rivalry, and that's what draws us. You know. You know, to be the Attitude Era, you had casual fans, internet fans, you had hardcore fans of all kinds. You had every single type of fan. You had old school fans coming back. Uh, 
you had fans that would only be there for the Attitude Era. You have fans that were permanent fans based on the Attitude Era. Um, you know, wrestling was great back then because you appealed to everyone. And that's what WWE does not do anymore. They focus strictly on the world title. The Intercontinental title sometimes is used to push a guy to the main event level. Very rarely. Only one guy at a time because it's so rare that they actually find somebody that they actually put faith in. Um, but yeah, like WWE is empty. It is a one-man show. And that's John Cena. Now it's a little bit of Daniel Bryan and also, of course, Triple H. You know he loves being on the screen, so the authority figure. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, PG, I've always made fun of WWE being PG, not because of the no blood. That alone is bad because it takes away any feud, any any reason to care about a Hell in a Cell match, any reason to care about a cage match. Every now and then a cage match without blood is alright, but a Hell in a Cell match without blood is new. new, new. Only if they do everything right in a Hell in a Cell match and make it as hardcore as possible and can do it in a way where it doesn't seem like they would bleed, then maybe it's okay. You know, sometimes there's exceptions, but no blood rule is completely unnecessary out of hand, and WWE has even admitted that it's TVG, not TVPG. They've been treating it as a TVG product, and to all those people who try to defend WWE for it, I laugh in their face. You know, because a lot of us internet wrestling fans have typically bash WWE for being TVPG, but really we're bashing them for being TVG, because WCW was TVPG, if I remember correctly from what people have said. Um, actually, no, I've seen it myself. Yes, TVG. But that's because they was a wrestling show first. NWO was a big part of that. That was their angle. They was a wrestling show through and through. They had skits. They might have had interference in a lot of matches, but they had match after match after match after match. They didn't bullshit around. They match after match after match. That was great. That's what would people go to see. You can vary it up. You can put triple threats. You can put four ways. You can put tag teams. You can put women's matches. You can put cage matches, war games matches, gauntlet matches. You can have all kinds of ways to add variety. 1997 WCW was some of the most enjoyable wrestling. And WWE was enjoyable in 1999 for having these over-the-top characters and storylines, but they had a lot of action in the ring. That's where it all begins, because you cannot have a wrestling show that is only storylines and wrestling just being there as an add-on. That cannot happen. So that's why I'm so excited about GFW, and I want to announce that, you know, well, it's Global Force Wrestling, so look it up if you don't know what it is. I'm sure anybody who does Anybody who types in it hopefully will find my video because, you know, it's it's a, it's something I'm really looking forward to. I want to buy their shirts. And I want to, you know, I want to support them in any way I can. Hopefully AJ Styles goes there. And I'm pretty sure he will. I'm pretty sure Daniels and Kazarian will go there. And maybe even Jay Lethal because I'm a big Jay Lethal fan. A uh, big um, Petey Williams fan. And, I, and maybe Monty Brown. I heard he retired, but maybe he'll come back. I don't know. Like, all these people that... I mean, maybe he's too old. I don't know how old he was back then, but it's been like 10 years since he's been on TV, so... I'm not against the whole over the age of 40 or 50 or whatever the no-no is in the IWC, but, you know, to me, it's somebody who, you know, if they can go, they can go. Christopher Daniels is over 40. He's like 45 or something. He does not age. It's okay for him. Plus, he hasn't been, like, in a heavy schedule constantly, like, you know, Undertaker or something. So he probably can, you know, and plus not as many injuries. Injuries is a big part of why a wrestler should retire around 50. But if they're good and they're healthy and they're, you know, they can go, fine, great. You know, but, you know, mainly focus on the young guys, 35 and younger. Um, you know, those are the guys. 35 is a wrestling peak. The wrestling peak, that's when people are at their best, their best drawing power most of the time. I mean, you got people like Rick Orton and Cena, who's younger, and maybe 
probably in this day and age, the peak might be younger. Maybe about 29-ish, 28. Maybe is the new wrestling peak. But regardless of that fact, you know, you need to be focusing on people that's 25 years old. And, you know, has made a name for themselves, proven that they can go, but also has stuff to learn. Um, or at least showcase on a massive scale, like TNA, which ain't we're so massive anymore. They've lost a lot of respect. Um, but Global Force Wrestling, hashtag join the force, um, has a lot of potential because it's Jeff Jarrett. And, you know, he, you know, regardless of what Schleg that he loves to bash him for, and that's pushing himself down people's throats, everyone in power that is a wrestler has pushed themselves hardcore. Triple H, Hulk Hogan, lots of people. Okay, even Vince McMahon, as much as people like to forget about it and just want to focus on David Arquette, Vince McMahon was world champion. Regardless of how he was the number one heel in the company, he was not world champion material by any stretch. And he was world champion multiple times. He was ECW champion. So, you know... I don't even know where I was really going with this. Um, oh, yes. Uh, but, you know, you, Slug Daddy, love to bash uh, Jeff Jarrett for doing what he did when, you know, he is not as bad as you say. He may not be the drawing king, but he's a heel, so that's kind of not his job to draw. <laughs> it's his job to get the face over. Something a lot of people seem to forget, um, you know, just because they're comparing to Stone Cold and people whose heels right before they're a face because they're getting over. You know, I'm a big Jeff Jarrett fan just because he is good. He's unique. He was a country guy. Not, not so much in his early days with the striped shirt thing that he was wearing, but more so in the, you know, WCW slap nut uh, era, you know, 1999, Deborah, puppies, you know, that Jeff Jarrett was cool. You know, he had the you know, he had the look, he had the technical ability and the finisher, the stroke, uh, which is a great move. I'm a big fan, even yeah. But um mainly because I gave my creative character that move and I didn't know who actually did it in real life until Jeff Jarrett started doing it. But anyways, in Grandmaster Sexy, uh, in the Miz. Now uh, if the Miz is even around, I don't fucking know. I don't watch WWE anymore. Hardly. Shit, it wasn't WrestleMania, I know that much. Uh, but, you know, GFW is going to be a wrestling show. That's uh, You know what that's going to be. You know Jeff Jarrett, like he said in his latest GFW from, uh, video, that he is probably the biggest wrestling fan in the world, at least in his eyes, because he just loves wrestling so much. And, you know, I'm so glad he does. You know, if there's two people who needs to run a wrestling promotion, I just thought of this recently, it's Jeff Jarrett and Tommy Dreamer. Because, you know, I watched AJ Styles' interview, uh, High Spots, his High Spots interview, and it was amazing. Go watch that. It's free. You can you can find the video online. Uh, it's like a three-hour interview of AJ Styles, and he you know, talks about, you know, how Hulk, Hulk Hogan didn't do nothing for the company. And, you know, how he was mad that he didn't say nothing whenever he was on a radio station. And he was pissed off that when they switched to the four side of ring. You know, stuff like that. So it was a really great interview. Go watch it. But yeah, and he was talking about how Tommy Dreamer had the same mindset as Paul Heyman. So if anybody's to run a wrestling promotion, you know, because he, he, he runs, I think, or is one of the, he has something to do with House of Hardcore or something like that. And I'm thinking... Why don't he create a wrestling promotion? He has the mind for it. Why worry about... I mean, I'm sure he has money behind him and a lot of, a lot of connections. Maybe he will one day. You know, I would love for him to, you know, get an idea. Somebody tell him that him and Paul Heyman needs... To, or him or Paul Heyman needs to fucking run another promotion. ECW doesn't need to be the end of it. They can learn from their mistakes. Jeff Jarrett ran two promotions. Why can't they? Um, anyways, I want to rant about Dixie Carter because she is a fucking... She puts her nose in everybody's, you know, she, like, tries to run the company into the ground. She doesn't listen. Maybe it's not her. I think 
she doesn't run financial. But according to AJ Styles, uh, he doesn't know who's in charge anymore. But the fact of the matter is, Dixie Carter is still a cancer to the company. And I really wish Jeff Jarrett got sponsored or whatever, whatever you call it when they just are just there to back the money up. As long as you're a profitable company, great. Um, and Dixie Carter is doing everything to ruin TNA. And, you know, Jeff Jarrett is going to, I'm going to laugh and I'm going to smile hugely when GFW one day outshines TNA. GFW is going to eat TNA whole. Now, I'm a big TNA fan, don't get me wrong. But the way they are running it now, the way they are trying to Russo it up with all these screwy finishes and never focusing on just a good bout, a good exhibition bout, you know, whatever. Uh, good, solid, bell to bell, move after move, uh, storytelling, you know, match. Where it actually ends in a way that makes somebody look good. Somebody maybe look bad, or both of them look good. TNA is the biggest problem. That and, like, not actually having a full match, or a match that means anything. It's just there to promote a story. And the fact that they focus on stories only and character progressions. Which, I will add, that at least the character progression is... The best it's ever been. I will say that. That's why TNA was great in 2014. Because you saw so many characters grow. You saw so many new faces. In the end of 2013. Uh, Magnus becoming the first British born champion in 100 years. That was great. But he didn't have a finisher. So what was the point? You gotta have some way for him to win. He never won a fucking match. He was a paper champion. Fine. If you booked him in a way. Where somebody looked good in the storyline. There was somebody that could benefit. Somebody like Samoa Joe. Make him look like he could fucking... He's like, give him like this close to winning every single time. Make it like such... like it, like it Get the fans like wanting it and squeezing it. Like, like I, I, it's hard to explain. But, you know, where, you know, people... Like, they're so close. Like, Triple H was a great heel because the face got so close to winning so many times. And then he would just find some way to win, whether it was clean or dirty. He would find somebody to win. But he was a badass. And he you hated that. You didn't want to admit, at least as a kid, because I actually did take heels seriously back then. I actually hated Triple H because I knew he was a badass. I knew he could actually win a match against somebody like Stone Cold, The Rock. And I didn't want to admit that. I didn't I didn't like that. And, you know, but, you know, because deep down he was an asshole. He was a guy that cheated sometimes. And whenever somebody... Some face actually was good enough to actually take out Triple H. He would find a way to cheat. And that's what would drive me crazy as a kid. And it was great looking years years later as an adult. Looking back, there's so, so fucking entertaining to see Triple H. And his run as the world champion multiple times, of course. Because back then the titles changed hands like rapidly. Uh, which a lot of fans do not like to admit and do not acknowledge that the Attitude Era was when titles started becoming paper, you know, they, they're all paper champions. They're all props. Um, but anyways, this video's gone on too long. Thanks for watching, guys. I really enjoyed making this video because I, I didn't, you know, it was just a good wrestling topic video. But mainly it's GFW, Global Force Wrestling, Join the Force hashtag, Join the Force, Force you know, I'm really, really looking forward to this company. I wish I had a shirt right now to prove it. All I have is my, you know, Ben Sevenfold shirt. But, um, <laughs> uh, the, you know, tell me, you guys, in the comments below what you think GFW is capable of, or rather you think, what wrestlers do you want to see in GFW? Um, what titles do you want to see in GFW? Do you want, what theme to the show do you want it as? For me, personally, I want it to be like old TNA. I want it to be a mixture of high flyers, hardcore, and storytelling. I want all of that. That, that was the complete experience for me. That's why TNA 2005, 2006, 2007 was the best wrestling ever. That and, you know, the Attitude Era. Those, those you know, WCW 97, maybe 98, a little bit. Um, you know, 
I want that wrestling. I want that energy. They need that energy, that action. I mean, the name alone says total nonstop action. That was the point, right? Action. WWE doesn't feel like an action show. It feels like you're taking a backseat to all this boring, slow, heel, uh, I'm going to talk in the ring for 20 minutes slowly to bore you to death so you'll hate me enough to where you want me to lose so I won't talk like this anymore. That's fucking boring and not entertaining. We want action. We want blood. We want violence. We want people crashing through tables. We want spots that we'll remember years to come. So thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and all that good stuff.